I'm going to turn it over to Alex Cassano, local author and photographer. He's going to talk about historic Tarpon Springs. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well, like Laura said, my name is Alex Cassano. I'm a Florida photographer, author, local entrepreneur, and historian. And today I'm going to be speaking about historic Tarpon Springs. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. But before we get started, I'm going to give you a brief introduction into what I do. This is a documentary I'm going to be starting production on. It's called The People of Palm Harbor, a documentary film, and it's going to be starting production in early 2019. It's about the different residents from Palm Harbor telling their side of the story of the history of Palm Harbor. So. This is an event I'm hosting called Historic Palm Harbor, a presentation. It's going to be held at the Clearwater Library on December 1st at the main library. There's many Clearwater libraries, so it's the one on Osceola, as you see. It's a free event. You're all welcome to come to learn about the Palm Harbor history. So, These are uh, my four books. The first one is the Florida ABC book, and that is a collection of the alphabet in conjunction with my photography. I've been a photographer since 2014, and um, that's my first book I wrote. It's great for early readers. My next book is Historic Tarpon Springs, A Photographic Journey, and that goes into more detail uh, than this presentation will, so if you're interested in that. Um, then there's A Photographic Journey, Natural Beauty of Florida up here. That's about different um, nature photos and um, different um, photographs I've taken over the years. And this is my most recent book, Historic Palm Harbor, which talks about different sites and different buildings in Palm Harbor's history. These are my two upcoming books I'm working on currently. The first one is Historic Pinellas County. A photographic journey and that's going to be coming out in early 2019 so be sure to look out for that as well as historic Dunedin a photographic journey that's coming out late 2019 and all my books are available for purchase on amazon.com so if you don't get um, if you don't um, if you want updates excuse me um, be sure to check on those on Amazon and this presentation is dedicated to all sponge divers and their families who gave their time and lives for the sponge industry. So thank you to them. We're going to watch a short video. So. I wanted to tell you that music was composed by me too, so <laughs> I'm multi-talented. 
thank you. In 1876, uh, A.W. Ormond and his teenage daughter Mary Ormond were prominent early settlers to arrive in Tarpon Springs from South Carolina. In 1877, a man by the name of Joshua Boyer arrived in Tarpon Springs. He built this cottage, um, and Joshua fell in love with Mary Ormond and married her in Tampa on April 14, 1877. He built this cottage near the Spring Bayou, it was originally located, uh, in 1878. Currently, the cottage is preserved here at Heritage Village right outside, so you could see it. Mary was fascinated with watching the fish that would leap out of the Spring Bayou, so she named Tarpon Springs in 1879. So she was the founder, or not the founder, but the namesake of Tarpon Springs. My first site I'm going to be speaking about is the Spongerama Sponge Factory, and it was founded in 1968. It is a place to purchase souvenirs such as sponges, homemade soap, and other Greek mementos. It also has a museum dedicated to the sponge industry in Tarpon Springs. This is Zorba's. Zorba's was a, a source of entertainment for the Greeks as well as the tourists. Zorba's featured Greek dancing and had um, Greek cuisine. Zorba's also had several owners uh, over the years. Among the first were Nicholas Petitis, who gave Zorba's its name when people, uh, when he bought the business in the late 60s. People called Mr. Nicholas Mr. Zorba, so that's how Zorba's acquired its name. And this building was built in 1932. Um, it has been closed for some time due to arson. Someone unfortunately started a fire and they never reopened the nightclub since then, but you can still see the outside. It is for sale currently at Olympic Re Realty. And you can still visit the site at 508 Athens Street. My next site I'm going to be speaking about is Hellas Restaurant and Bakery. It's a very popular restaurant and bakery, and this building was built in the 1920s, and it served as one of the previous locations for the Papa's Restaurant. The Papa's family were well known in Tarpon Springs, uh, for creating their famous Greek salad and opening their restaurant in the 1920s named the Louis Papa's Riverside Cafe. Hellas moved into the building in the 1970s and the building at one point in time housed the Spartan Taverna restaurant. Um, so that's a little history about the Hellas building. This is Ernest Mears and his son. Who was Ernest Mears? He was the son of Amelia Mears, also known locally as Mother Mears. Ernest was an active sponge trader and insurance agent. He settled in Tarpon Springs with his parents in 1883, and he was the co-founder of um, the Tarpon Springs Sponge Exchange with John Cheney. Here's the sponge exchange. And it was founded by John Cheney and Ernest R. Mears between 1907 and 1908. This is John Cheney. He was a financier from Philadelphia for the sponge industry in Tarpon Springs. John Cheney also founded the Anco and Rock Island Sponge Company in 1891. He was married to Mabel Starr, who Mabel Starr's uncle was named David Starr, and he constructed and built the, seven, uh, the House of Seven Gables in 1907, originally located in Clearwater, but it's here presently. It's the old beautiful house and uh, here at Heritage Village. This is John Kokoris. John Cheney partnered with John Kokoris, who was the first Greek in Tarpon Springs. In 1905, um, John Kokoris is responsible for bringing the first Greek sponge diving boats to Tarpon Springs. He also helped recruit over 500 sponge divers with their families and friends from Greece. So John Kokoris is accredited with bringing Greek culture to Tarpon Springs. That's him right there. Before the Greeks arrived, there was a sponge industry in Tarpon Springs uh, made of African-American, Caribbean, Anglo divers from Key West. The Greeks bought with them the technology uh, and the diving suits, which allowed to, the divers to stay underwater longer and harvest more sponges. 
and this is the original remnant of the old sponge exchange. And the sponge exchange was a place for local sponge diving crews to auction off their sponges to local merchants. And the auction took place twice a week. Unfortunately, the sponge exchange closed and part of it was demolished. Today, the location is preserved with the shopping village. These are two memorials dedicated to John M. Kokoris and John Cheney. And no, they are not graves. They're not buried there. Um, but they're memorial plaques uh, at the Sponge Exchange, and John Cheney is buried in Philadelphia in the Cheney Family Cemetery, and John Kokoris is buried at, in Jacksonville yeah, with his wife. Yeah. The Tarpon Springs Bayou was a was and is a popular gathering place for events including Epiphany and other celebrations like Fourth of July in Craig Park. Epiphany is an annual celebration commemorating the baptism of Jesus Christ in the River Jordan. Each year on January 6th, uh, young men between the ages of 16 and 19 dive into the bayou to retrieve a cross thrown by the Greek Archbishop. Because of the warm water, manatees also migrate to the bayou in the wintertime. And the bayou is also the location where Tarpon Springs got its namesake. Here's some pictures from last year's Epiphany, or this year's Epiphany in 2018. As you can see with the top photo, these are young men diving and searching for the cross. And this is the victory photo with the diver young diver retrieved the cross. The Tropical Hotel was a well-known hotel in Tarpon Springs. It later became known as the Ferns, which was run by Amelia Mears, also known locally as Mother Mears, and this is her in her garden. Currently, the Spartan Gas Station here, pictured here, is at this location at 4th South Pinellas Avenue. This is the Tarpon Springs Cultural Center, and it was built in 1910. It used to house city offices, one of the locations for the library. Currently, it is owned by the Tarpon Arts, and the architecture of the cultural center is Greek Revival style. This is the current city hall, and it was built in 1925. Before um, it was um, the city hall, it was the Tarpon Springs High School. Um, it uh, is also the Performing Arts Center, which is also owned by Tarpon Arts. And I also met a very important man, and that very important man is Mayor Alahousis, Mayor Chris Alahousis. He's the current mayor of Tarpon Springs, and here he is with me holding my book. He's a very nice man. And so thank you to the city of Tarpon Springs and him for letting me meet with him. This is the old Tarpon Springs Jail, which is now the old Silver King Com Brewing Company. It dates back to 1909, the Tarpon Springs Jail does. Does anyone know who was the first marshal or sheriff in Tarpon Springs? It was a man by the name of Reuben T. Jones. This is him with the Tarpon, as you could see. He served as sheriff from 1906 to 19. In 1921, he was unfortunately murdered um, near Wikiwachi Springs, but they never found out who murdered him. He is buried in Cicadia Cemetery in 1950, and this is Reuben Jones crossing Tarpon Avenue, as you could see. It looks much different now. In 1950, the Tarpon Springs Firehouse was added. Does anyone know what kind a um, what kind a fish is a silverkin? Can anyone take a guess? It's a tarpon. You are correct. And Christopher Still has a uh, Christopher Still is a Florida fine art painter, and his studio is located right across the street from Silver King. He painted a painting about the sponge industry called Changing Tides, and there it is over there as you could see. This is St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral. It was originally built, the first cathedral, 
1907. The reason why they had to build a new cathedral was because their parish was growing so much. So um, they constructed the new cathedral in 1941, and in 1943 uh, it was completed. Some of the unique features of the cathedral include three chandeliers imported from Czechoslovakia, the stained glass windows that were imported from Italy, and the marble that was used to construct the altar was imported from Greece and it appeared at the Greek Pavilion in the 1939-1940 World's Fair in New York. So that's some unique features next time you visit it. It's a beautiful Greek Orthodox cathedral. Cicadia is a historical cemetery. It was founded in October of 1887 Cycadia Cemetery was named for the cycad palms planted there by Mother Mears. The oldest headstone is C.L. Webster, 1856 to 1872. Several notable people are buried here, including Reuben T. Jones, who was the first sheriff of Tarpon Springs, Anson P. K. Safford, Dr. Mary Jane Safford, who um, Anson P.K. Safford was the third territorial governor of Arizona. Mary Jane Safford was the first doctor in Tarpon Springs. Um, Aaron Ritchie, who founded the town Port Ritchie, Mr. Ritchie um, became mayor of Tarpon Springs in 1894. Mr. Ritchie was also the first port postmaster of Port Ritchie, so that's how we named Port Ritchie. The Mears family and other citizens who contributed to the history of Florida and Tarpon Springs are also buried here. And this is the Safford Memorial Pavilion, and it, it was originally located in Cicadia Cemetery. It was built in 1896, and it is a tribute to Anson P.K. Safford. The pavilion is currently located at Heritage Village right out here. Um, you could see it. This is Rose Cemetery, also known as Rose Hill Cemetery. It is an African-American cemetery, first incorporated in 1916. The oldest existing tombstone is dated to 1904. However, burials began in the 1890s. Rose Cemetery is currently located on Jasmine Road in Tarpon Springs. This is the Ann Colt Lighthouse. It was built in 1887. It had seven keepers from 1887 to 1949, and it is located on Ann Colt Key, so you have to take a boat to get there. And several companies on the sponge docks do offer cruises, so be sure um, to check them out. And it is um, currently active and open. People can visit it and have tours. They do open it from time. It's active. It's a Florida State Park, also known as Ancote Keys State Park. And it's three miles off Tarpon Springs. So it's not in Tarpon Springs, it's on Tarpon Springs. The library has quite the history. The first location of the library, pictured here, up here, is the Tarpon Springs Cultural Center. The second location of the library was a house on Orange Street, which is not pictured here. The third location was in the Arcade Hotel building. The fourth location was in the Ailes building. The alleyway was named Library Lane um, by the Ailes building. The fifth location was near Spring Bayou in the Tarpon Springs Heritage Museum. And the final location was built in 1996 and it has a fountain, and those are Silver King, also referred to as Tarpon. And that's a picture of how Tarpon Springs got its name. You see the, its symbolism as the bayou, that fountain, and the Tarpon leaping. So that's some unique features about it. This is the Mears building. It was built in 1914. The building originally housed on the first floor, the Royal Theater, the Tarpon Springs Post Office, and a Western Union office. On the second floor, it was the Hotel Mears. And, and this is it currently. In 2010, the Mother Mears mural was gifted to the city of Tarpon Springs. This mosaic mural took 2,000 hours to complete. 
Mother Mears was an early settler to Turpin Springs in 1883. She was born on April 5, 1845 in Germany and died on October 20, 1923 in Tarpon Springs. This is the Tarpon Springs Historical Society. The original building was built in 19, or previous to 1908, but unfortunately burned down. Um, in 1909, the second and current building was built. By the 1970s, rail service had ended, and the building became home of the Tarpon Springs Historical Society. And the railroad industry was very prom uh, prominent in Tarpon Springs, and so it was the railroad depot. And it features several, um, several exhibits currently about the railroad industry in Tarpon Springs, and they're open from Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to 3 p.m., so be sure to check them out. Okay, there were two major films filmed in Tarpon Springs. The first one I'm going to mention is the 16 Fathoms Deep, the 1948 version. It starred Lloyd Bridges and Lon Chaney Jr. The film featured several sites, including the Tarpon Arcade, um, the Sponge Exchange, and the Sponge Docks. There was an original version of 16 Fathoms Deep that also starred Lon Chaney Jr. in 1934 was made. But that was not filmed in Tarpon Springs, that version. But the 1948 was. The 1948 version of 16 Fathoms Deep is only available on YouTube. Several copies are, have been released uh, on VHS, but it's very rare. It, it's impossible to find. And I recently uh, found a copy on eBay, and I got it. But unfortunately, it didn't make it in time. So I wish I could have showed you. My next film I'm going to be talking about is Beneath the Twelfth Mile Reef, and that was done in 1953. And it starred Robert Wagner, Terry Moore, Gilbert Rowland, and Peter Graves. It was by um, the 20th Century Fox, and it had several sites in Turpin Springs, too. It is also available on YouTube to watch, but that is available for purchase on DVD on Amazon.com. They do have copies available. And Bernard Herman did the score uh, for Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef. He also did several, several uh, movies, including uh, Citizen Kane and multiple Alfred Hitchcock movies. I don't know if you've seen any of those, but he did the scores for those. He actually did the score for Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef as well. This is Currents. Currents was built in 1905. It used to house two grocery stores, a meat market, a barber shop, several saloons over the years, a coffee shop, a pool room, and a cigar shop. It was used for the fight scene in Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef. The original bar where they filmed the fight scene still remains in Currents. And this is a current picture of Currents. <laughs> As you could see. This is the Taylor Arcade, and it was built in 1910. It was originally featured a cigar shop, a pool room, a barber shop, and a grocery store. Florida Power also had an office in the Taylor Arcade. From the 1940s through the 1960s, it was home to a movie theater, which later became a dance studio. It now houses several retail spaces and a restaurant called the Bayou Cafe. This is the Safford House, and it was built in 1883, um, and it, this is an original picture of it. It was the home of Anson P.K. Safford, Mary Jane Safford, Anson's wife named Soledad. Um, does anyone know, know who was Anson P.K. Safford? He was the third governor of Arizona. Of Arizona Territory. Because from July 9th, 1869 to April 5th, 1877, does anyone know when Arizona became a state? In 1912. So he was governor uh, before the state became a state, so it was called the territory. Who, who was Mary Jane Safford? You might be wondering who she was. She was first the first, yes, she was the first female doctor in Tarpon Springs. Um, and Tarpon Springs and Florida. And the Safford House, 
This is it currently. This is Anson P. Slee killing Safford, which uh, he was the third territorial governor. This is Mary Jane Safford, sister. And this is the Clemson House. The Clemson House was built in 1900, and it was the home of George Clemson, who was the owner of the Star Hacksaw Blade Manufacturing Company. And the Safford House was originally located where this house was um, in the 1890s, and previous to that, it moved. This is the Unitarian Universalist Church, and it was built in 1909. Several Universalists founded the original church, which unfortunately burned down in the Great Fire of Tarpon Springs in 1908. The church housed George, several George Ennis Jr. paintings, which are in storage presently due to a sinkhole uh, with the church. As you can see, it was closed, but the church is located on 230 Grand Boulevard. This is the Tarpon Springs Golf Course, and it was built in 1909 and 1927. The course grew from the original nine holes to an 18-hole golf course. It is officially owned and operated by the city of Tarpon Springs as a public golf course, so anyone could go and play golf. This is the Orpheum Theater. It was built circa 1910, according to Tarpon Springs city records. It was most likely built around 1905 because the building looks like it was connected, as you could see. Here's Currents, which was constructed in 1905, and they share a wall, so it was most likely 1905 when it was built, around the time of Currents. Um, and it, it became the first motion picture theater in Tarpon Springs, as well as it later became a performance theater. The movie theater closed in 1919, and currently it is home to several shops. St. Michael's Shrine was built in 1950. The shrine is dedicated to St. Michael the Archangel, who appeared in a vision to an 11-year-old boy named, by the name of Steve Salakis, who was dying of a brain tumor. The boy was miraculously healed and the parents and his parents were instructed by St. Michael to build the shrine in their backyard. Um, so they, that's what they did, and they built St. Michael's in 1950. And people all over, from the, all over from the world come here to pray for their um, ones that need healing. So Where is it located? It is on Hope Street in Tarpon Springs. This is the E.R. E. Mir Sponge Warehouse. It was built in 1901. It is one of the oldest sponge warehouses still remaining and operating in Tarpon Springs. The sponge warehouse demonstrated how the sponges, once they were caught or harvested, how they were, were stored and preserved. You could still visit the site at 117 Roosevelt Boulevard. These are some of the sources I used uh, for this presentation. The John King Cheney and the portrait of John Kokoris are provided by the Florida State Archives on Florida Memory, courtesy of them. Thank you to them. The Ferns Hotel picture, which you saw, are uh, from the, um, the Florida Memory. The, all these listed here are from Florida Memory. Reuben T. Jones, Crossing the Street, Mother Mears Portrait, Reuben Jones with the Tarpon Fish, the Old Tarpon Springs Jail, the Safford House Postcard, Kearns Restaurant, and the Mears Building Postcard are all provided by the Tarpon Springs Area Historical Society. And all photographs that are provided by them are for educational purposes only. Um, and thank you so much to Phyllis Colianos. A big shout out to her. She's the Vice President and Archivist for the Tarpon Springs Area Historical Society. She helped me a lot with, the, with getting those photos listed. Thank you so much to Jeff Miller, who is the Archivist for the West Pasco Historical Society. He provided me the picture of E.R. Mears and his son Walter that you saw. And the Spartan Taverna was also provided by Florida Memory, so thank you to them. 
and th the video, the text, and design, and all other photos besides the one I'm, I mentioned above are the property of me. Thank you. So this um, concludes my presentation and tour of Tarpon Springs. Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Well, most of the sites first um, are listed in my book, and how I narrowed them down from not every site, well, was because the different buildings, the date when they were built, constructed, what were the uses if they have really interesting uses. Even the ones that don't really have interesting uses, I still wanted to choose. I didn't want to make a big book, and that was the basis for this presentation and everything like that. Does anyone have? Yes. I have a question. Yes. Earlier you mentioned that you would be interviewing residents of the area. Yes, in the Palm Harbor documentary. It's going to be a documentary yes. about the people the of Palm Harbor. Yes, the history told by the residents. Alex, can you repeat the question? Yes. The question she asked was, um, what is the documentary that I'm going to be doing about Palm Harbor about? And it's going to be about the different residents, longtime residents that lived in Palm Harbor for a long time, telling their side of the story of history of Palm Harbor. It's not going to be me. It's going to be the longtime residents that grew up and any resident of Palm Harbor telling their side of the story of Palm Harbor. It's going to be a community effort, and it's going to be a good one. Yes? Just an aside, the Safford House is open uh, to tourists. It's Joseph yes. Led. We're open uh, Wednesdays and Fridays yes. from 11 to 3. Yes, and they do have Christmas decorations and Christmas tours coming up in December, too. So be sure to check that out with the Safford House. Does anyone have any? Yes, sir. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background, where you went to school, and how you became interested in the history of Pinellas County? Sure. This is um, interesting. Well, I'm. My name is Alex Casano. Like I said, I'm a homeschooled student. I've been homeschooled since the eighth grade. My parents decided to uh, homeschool me. And I just took an interest in Pinellas County history. I originally volunteered in the, uh, I used to do life history videos for the Palm Harbor Museum from 2013 to 14 for a year. And I got interested in the Palm Harbor's area first. Then I found out about some of the local historians, and, and I just started reading Florida history books. So that's kind of how I got started in this wonderful um, thing. And my photography was a big role to play, too, because I love taking historical photos of buildings as well as nature photos and other photographs, too. I don't really do portrait photography. I'm not a, uh, that's not my specialty. I do do it. It's my specialty, but not often. I mostly do uh, nature photographs and building photographs. Any more questions? Why did the people uh, decide to settle in that area? In Tarpon Springs? Yeah. Can you repeat that? Now? Yes. Why did um, people start coming to Tarpon Springs? Well, it was a man, there are several reasons. Who really put Tarpon Springs on the map was a man by the name of Hamilton Distant. He owned a lot of acreage here. He, I think he owned over four million acres. He, he was good friends with Anson P.K. Safford, who was the third governor, and he just told friends about it, and then that's how Tarpon Springs really got on its map, on the map of Florida, to come here as a destination. Then when the, the availability of sponge. Yes, and, and the Tarpon. sponge industry and the Greeks came here in 1905, but there was a sponge industry before 1905, like I said, it was the Anglos and the African Americans and uh, Anson met, yes. met uh, Hamilton Distant yes. in Philadelphia, and uh, that's what brought him to Tarpon Springs to manage a land development company. Wow. Yes. Does anyone else have any more questions about historic Tarpon Springs? <laughs> no. Well, thank you so much to everyone for coming to my presentation and learning about historic Tarpon Springs. 
Thank you also to Laura Winnie and the Pinellas County Historical Society, as well as Heritage Village for hosting me in my presentation. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you so much. And I'll be in the back for a meet and greet if you want to ask me more questions. Okay. Thank you.